slides next. So today what we're going to talk about is the one on the calculator we're not as comfortable with, the logarithms, and that's ln. And again, like I talked to you about before, it should be lowercase l and lowercase. But the calculator, when they made it, if they put that on there, too many students thought it said the word in. So they decided we're going to make this ln. And that way with capital L and capital N, everybody will see, hey, this is not the word in. This is ln. But it really is a lowercase l and a lowercase n that stands for natural logarithm. Now that is base e, which we're not incredibly comfortable with. You know, e is that, that weird Euler number thing. But we've got calculators, and it has the weird Euler number on it. So anytime we have a base of e, in this case we could have an exponential or a base of e, we're just going to use the calculator, whether or not we're looking at natural logs or we're looking at e. So quick reminder, the button we most need for e is usually the one that has second an ln, because that one pops up in power for us. So that's usually the one we want to use, and that is just to the left of the 4 button. So now. Let's talk about natural logarithms because that's the other name for them here. Okay. I hate when it doesn't do the auto hide. There we go. So evaluate and simplify natural logarithmic expressions. That's anything that has the ln in it. To solve equations using natural logarithms, we're going to do that today. Now my hope is we'll get through everything but the one word problem, and then we can do the one word problem and start our review for the test tomorrow. So now I'm here in the getting ready. It says a function f is called bounded above if there's some number b that f of x can never exceed. It's never going to go over it. So that means if I wrote a line on here, a horizontal line somewhere, if the graph never gets there, then it's called bounded above. Well, the red one is not bounded above. That's going to keep going forever. Up. And the blue one, well, this is going up, so it's it's still going to increase, and it's still going to reach my green line at some point. So it says the exponential function base e, shown here. So this one is y equals e to the x in the red, is not bounded above. And then the question is, is the logarithmic function, its inverse, is that going to be bounded above? And if so, find a bounding number, and if not, explain why. So let's see. If we have this, we think about inverses. What inverses do is they switch the x and the y. And then I want to think backwards about, well, where did that come from if they snail shelled and got that? That was a base of e, snail shelled to the y power, equals x. So that's what the blue one is up here. That blue one is y equals logarithm base e of x, which we have our nice little shortcut to write, which is natural log of e to the x. Why am I putting an e there? That should just be x. There we go. Because natural log is logarithm base e. So their question is, Will that one be cut off? Well, the domain for this one is always. We can put whatever we want in there for our x's. And what we're going to get back for our y's is everything that's bigger than zero. And that's because this red graph never crosses that asymptote of the x-axis. Now remember, for inverses, those two things switch. So if I go over to the blue graph, and I think domain and range, well now my domain is going to be x has to be greater than zero, but my range is going to be always. So now I don't have another bounded graph. You know, the red graph is definitely going to keep going up forever and ever. But up is y, and y is range, and that one's going to keep going up forever and ever. So neither one of them is going to be bounded. If we investigate it, it'll be in depth. Now we can all 
also graph the monographic probability, which is the visual and say, nope, this is going up forever. So the function y equals e to the x has an inverse, and that is called the natural logarithmic function. Natural logarithmic function is our, our little ln, which is y equals logarithm base e of x, which sometimes we're going to want to write it like this because we're going to want a snail shell. If you need a snail shell, that's how we'll write it. But really, it's just ln. That's all it is. So this one is for us. If we need to solve by the most fancy word for it is exponentiate. But the snail shelling is exponentiate. Essential understanding. The functions y equals e to the x and y equals ln of x are inverse functions. So everything that exponents do, logarithms have to do. We talked about how if it's going to undo something, it has to follow the same rules. So it follows those same rules. This means that if a equals e to the b, then b equals the natural log of a and vice versa because we have to be able to snail shell it to get the same thing. Down here, they're showing us that we could graph this, and we actually did this earlier in the chapter. Here's our e to the x right here, and there's the natural log of x. And you can see, they look like it's been reflected through the line y equals x. That makes it an inverse right there. So natural logarithms don't do anything different than what we've done with all the other logarithms. It's just that it seems really weird to have a base of an a number, but remember that E is a number. So today, working strictly on solving again, but now we're going to have ln on there, which again is on our calculator. So we're going to condense, we're going to expand, and we're going to try and solve. So let's see, this one says, what is 2 natural log of 15 minus natural log of 75? written as a single logarithm. Remember I said this book is the, really the only one that does this. Most books will just say condense. How many of you have ever had Campbell's soup? Red and white label. Yeah, it's called condensed soup. Nobody ever catches that, but it's right on the label. It says Campbell's condensed soup. And that means they took some water out to smoosh it down and fit it in a can. And then they need to add water soup. Well, we're doing that here. Right now, this is the soup, but we've got to squish it down and fit it in the can. So I start thinking, that 2 is really awkward up there. Where did that 2 come from? Oh, yeah, the 2s that are being multiplied came from powers. So this has to go back up here and become natural log of 15 squared. Now, since everything has numbers up here, there are no x's and y's, I should probably take a second to figure out what that is. You remember what 15 squared is? 225. And then I see it has subtraction. So I have to think subtraction in logarithm language is not subtraction. What is it? It is division. So this is really going to be the natural log of 225 over 75. So then I think. Three times. So this is really natural log three. Now it didn't say rounded it to four decimal places, rounded it to the ten thousandths position. It said condense it. So we're done. That's as far as we go. We just keep working down, down, down. They wanted to keep logarithm for them. Make sure that everybody understood that it was logarithms that were talking about. And then Euler's number E in really old language is called the natural base. So that's why they call it the natural logarithm. There's a link that's from you know, really old languages that we don't speak anymore. But it is the natural base and it is a logarithm. So natural logarithm. That's just what they decided to do. So yeah, it would almost be nicer if it was NN. But like I said, they want to make sure everybody understands it is a logarithm. 
Alrighty, so let's take a look at our got it, and I'm going to ask you guys to help out a lot. Where do we start with the got it 1A? To the tube. Got to go back up as a power. <clears throat> Plop it back up there. Do you know what 5 squared is? 25. Now what does addition do to my one? Multiply. Well, I think we could probably do that in your head. If you have 7 quarters, how much money do you have? $1.75. So natural log of one seventy five. I can't make two ends. It's done. Could we find it for them? Absolutely. We have a calculator. We can just punch in L and one seventy five, but that's not what they asked us to do. It said single logarithm, which means commence. Alrighty, let's look at B. Ooh, this looks tougher. Both of them back up. You want to do that in one step? Both of them up as powers? Okay. So natural log of x to the third minus natural log of 2x squared. But notice I had to put parentheses because both of them get that. Okay, well maybe we better figure out what 2x times 2x is. What is 2x? x times 2x, what do you get? Four x squared. You have to be careful with those. <coughs> now all we have left is subtraction. What is subtraction? Division. Okay, so natural log x to the third over 4x squared. I don't think we're done. I think we can simplify that. Take an x squared out of the top and the bottom. Exactly. So that'll leave us with 1x up here. And there it is. The next. Bless you. <coughs> so we're still doing a lot of the simplifying that we had to do in chapter 6 when we originally did powers. But we are commencing. Uh-oh. C has three terms. Oh my goodness. Notice how I always rewrite them. And that's because if I were doing this homework, the first thing I would do is write it down because then you think as you're going through that. Who do you want to do first? Put the three back up? Would you put the other power back up at the same time? Most people probably would. So natural log of x to the third plus natural log of y squared plus natural log of 5. Well, what does addition do? Multiply. So we got to multiply x cubed times y squared times 5. Well, well, that's not too hard to do. That's 5 x cubed y squared. Looks like a bad problem. Really, all we have to do is put the powers back up. And that's because the natural log of 5 is not something next. I mean, we're not running into anything here where we would even grab a calculator and say, oh, this number would turn out nice. These are not going to be nice. Commencing. Notice we're using the exact same rules that we did when we used logarithm base 2, logarithm base 10, logarithm base 5. Well, it, it's still the same rules. Multiplication and the power. We saw subtraction. Saw addition, that was going to be multiplication. So now we can use that inverse relationship that we have between the functions natural log of x and e to the x <coughs> to solve when we have logarithmic and exponential equations that involve e. Again, another name for e is natural base, but most of the time I'll just talk about it as e. Something like this. What are the solutions of Natural log of x minus 3 squared equals 4. Oh boy. Logarithms are tough enough, but natural logarithm? All right. Well, let's give it a try. Um, we don't want the logarithm there. So 
So the first thing I would do is say to myself, self, I better think of it as this. Oh my gosh, all I have to do is snail shell and solve it. That's what we do. We get one logarithm all by itself and we snail shell. Now it's not going to look nice. e to the fourth equals x minus 3 squared. Okay. So do I have to do x minus 3 times x minus 3? I want to get rid of this square. How do you undo square in something? Square root. Now, what do we have to remember if we're taking the square root? Plus or minus. So now I think about this. I need two things with e that when I have the exact same thing for the power would give me e to the fourth. What would the power have to be for both of these? It has to be a two. looks weird, but remember our calculator is going to do that for us. So we're just going to leave this side like this for now. We're going to work from the other side because we're not done. X isn't by itself. What do we do? Add three. And then we just count on the calculator for this one because it has that goofy E stuff in it. If we wanted a perfect answer, that would be a perfect answer. Right there. We have three plus E squared and three minus E squared. But these are the, the other ones that we probably want you to go to four decimal places for these. So, wonderful little calculator. I need 3 plus second ln e squared. So that would be x is approximately 10.3891. And then I'm going to cheat and hit second enter and just change this to subtraction. Not make it awful to punch it all in. So x could also be approximately negative 4.3891. But that one worries me a little bit. Because we've talked about how we have logarithms. And with our logarithms, our bases are always supposed to be positive. So that one I would probably check. I'd go up here and make sure that that's not going to have me doing something negative. But if I put a negative in here and I subtract 3 from it, and I square it, is there any chance this is going to come out to be a negative? Not a chance. So they are both good in this case. And that's all because of this little squared right there. That's what's going to keep everything positive. So we've got them. They're not pretty, but we have them. There's our answers. All right, let's go after the got it here so you guys can help me out a little bit more. Do you remember what the first thing I did was? Log base E. Got to see the base. Have to see the base. Again, a fancy word that the book calls it is exponentiate. But we know it's just snail shell. That's all it is. So we make our little snail shell. Oh my gosh. We punched this one in here again. This one is just E squared. That's all it is. Second LN. 7.3891. Now, if we check this answer with 7.3891, it's probably going to be a teensy bit off from 2. Let's check it. If we just do natural log of 7.3891. Oops, I forgot to finish up my parentheses. Oh, and I changed the decimal. That's a mess. decimal places we have to go before it gets messed up. So then we'll have an idea that, yep, we did it right. We've got it. Let's look at B. That looks a lot more like the example we just did up there. What should you do first? Base E. Let's do it. Logarithm base E. 3x plus 5 squared equals 4. Snail shell, e to the fourth, 
equals 3x plus 5, that quantity squared. So how are we going to do your example? How are we going to get rid of that little square? Square roots. And what do you have to be careful of when you do square root? Plus and minus. And what is the square root of e to the fourth? All right, looks like we've got some algebra we're going to have to do here. So how are we going to get x by itself? Subtract 5. So this one's a little messier than the one we had before. We subtracted 5 from both sides. But it's not done yet, right? How do we get x along? Divide by 3. So this one's going to have a little bit extra to it when we punch it in for our two answers. So let's see what we get. We need negative 5 plus e squared. And we need to divide that by 3. So 0 0.7964. And we need negative 5 minus e squared and divided by 3. So negative 4.129. 7. Good problem. Our four decimal places. Now, do I have to worry about this one being negative? Should I check and make sure none of this is, is going to come out to be a uh, non real answer on my calculator? What in the problem tells me no matter what, if I put these in, negative or not, I'm going to get positive answers? The squared, exactly, right here. It's going to be squared. So it doesn't matter that they came out negative. It's, it's fine. They're going to be squared when you go through the process. Oh boy, look at C. We haven't done that yet. Natural log of 2x plus natural log of 3 equal. Well, we can't snail shell that. We don't have just one logarithm. How do we get that to just be one logarithm? Multiplication. Yeah, this is addition. We know logarithm language. Addition is multiplication. So 3 times 2x is going to be 6x equals 2. Now it looks like the one that needs to work. So what do we do next? We're going to snail shell, so we're going to write this as logarithm base e of 6x equals 2, e squared equals 6x. So how do you get x along? Divide by 6. So this is another one that kind of looked really messy, but ends up as a pretty nice punch it in problem. So second, e squared I'm going to divide that by 6. Bless you. 1.2315. And only one answer this time because we didn't have to take any square roots. And we did that one. So those were all natural logarithm equations. Big part of our objective there was just solving natural logarithm equations. So I want to check 43210. Just solving our natural log that LN thing. I usually expect a little bit lower numbers on these. As long as we can get through our head, LN is logarithm base E, then I'll just snail shell. We're fine. These, I think, are going to go a little nicer. What's the solution to this monster? Why, that just looks like algebra. What would you do first? Subtract 2. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Let's subtract 2. I don't think that 4 can be there. So what do we do to get rid of the 4? Divide. And we might want to reduce a little bit at this point. So 14 fourths is 7 halves. So now what is the new step? That's a base of E. Hmm. 
when we had problems that looked like this before, we took the logarithm base 2 because those were inverses of each other. But this is a base e. So we have to take logarithm base e, which means we're going to do this. A natural logarithm on both sides. Now what that does is it gets this e to just drop right out. And over here, this is something we could punch into the calculator. We have an ln button on our calculator. But we're not quite done with the algebra yet. Because what would we have to do for that twice on the end? Divide by 2. And then it's calculator time. So calculator, we're using that ln button. ln. 7 divided by 2 parentheses. And don't forget your parentheses. And then divide it by 2. 0 0.6264. Why was it so bad? I mean, it's, it's just normal algebra like we've always done, but when we see an E, we do ln instead of logarithm base whatever, because ln is logarithm base E. All right, let's take a look at the got it here. 3a. Oops. Sorry. Do we need to move anything over? Base is exposed right here. How do we get rid of a base of e? Natural log, ln. So ln on both sides. This is going to drop out. Cool, that we can do on the calculator, but we wouldn't quite be done. So what else do we have to do to get our twice on Add 2. So ln base 2 So x equals whatever we get for the natural log of 12, and then we're just going to add 2. Natural log. my base raised to a power. Natural log. Uh-oh, B's going to take a little bit of work before we can do natural log. But just a little bit, right? What do we do? Divide by 2. Got to be E to the blah blah blah. 20 divided by 2 is 10. So what's next? ln. This will drop out. Negative x equals natural log of 10. So how are we going to get x? Divide by negative 1. So our good old calculator is going to tell us what the natural log of 10 divided by negative 1 would be. Negative 2.3026. Oh, but wait a minute. Negatives. Remember the other sections when we had negative answers, sometimes we had to say this one doesn't work. Is this one going to be okay? You see why? Yeah, minus a negative. So we're going to be fine. It'll be a positive because that minus a negative. All right, C. That must take a little bit more work. What's step one? Subtract the 5, exactly. Think algebra. We've got to get that e to the 3x all by itself. Already? Yeah. The e to the power is by itself. It's the fancy book word is isolate. It's isolated. So yeah, all we have to do, natural log of both sides. So 3x equals natural log of 10. Last step would be divide by 3. So calculate. Zero 
0.7675. Well, we were supposed to evaluate and simplify natural logarithmic expressions and solve equations using natural logarithms. Cool. That's the second part of the objective. So 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. How are you feeling about solving using natural log or exponentials? Yeah, it looks like everybody got a little more confidence. A little bit further into this. So, just a moment. There it is. We have people losing it. They probably will not take for too long. Because every time I went to ask a question, everybody's head was down and you were already doing the problems. That's a good thing. That tells me you, you felt comfortable and you were solving them on your own. Um, so we did get to where I wanted to be. So tomorrow we just have one word problem to go through, and then we can start reviewing for the test. This test actually has a non-calculator portion and then a calculator portion. Um, the first part is just finding, evaluating logarithms without a calculator. You know, doing the snail shelling in your head. There's only like six of those, I think, or so on the test. So we'll probably review that tomorrow and then hang on to the calculator portion stuff until Thursday. Alrighty.